form up. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Welcome. This is the podcast by Wake the Farm Up called Maintaining Ground. And I am your host, Andy the Elf. (laughs) Wake the Farm Up! In this podcast experiment, I'll be talking with old friends, new friends, and a whole variety of people who are very inspiring, intriguing, and have their own opinion about the world to share, and incredible stories. So I hope you enjoy this experiment. Here we go. Hey, old lady, old lady. Wake the farm up. Folks, I want to present to you Honky Tonk Ranger Michael Shaw. Let's give them all a good welcome. Shut the farm up. (laughs) Oh, yeah, mother farmer. Wake the farm up. <laughs> we're down in Nashville, Tennessee right now, but I think we're going to be exploring some more places than just that. So, how you doing, Michael? Doing very well. Andy, how are you doing? I'm pretty good. I'm having a good time. Good, man. Great to talk to you. Yeah. I think it's a, a lot of good times can come up when I end up talking with you. Yeah, we've got a long history of them, don't we? Going way I, back. Yeah, I feel like I, there's something about us that feels like it's still fresh. We can keep going. Yeah, we're we're a couple survivors, man. We're going hard, you know. And yeah, I, I don't think we're ready to quit. No, I, I I know some dogs. You run into them, and they just want to yodel and howl about how it was, how it could have been, and yep. how it yep. is for them, and how they got neutered or some shit. But. Yeah, yeah, a lot of a lot of ponies have been gelded, you know, and uh, they're they, really content hanging out in their tiny little puny pasture pen. Yeah, know. and they only got one trick. They only got one trick. Yeah, they're very limited. <laughs> but, yeah, they're not. It's like forty years later. They're like, remember that one time I jumped over a fence? Yeah, yeah, that one time they got out, you know, and had a little bit of freedom. <laughs> <sighs> Yeah, yeah, we've been, we've been running out in the open range for a long time, I feel like. Yeah, talk about open range. I'm so <laughs> fascinated, and I know a lot of people are by your, was it 12, 13 years as a ranger on horse in Montana? Yeah, yep. Right around that, 12 or 13, uh, I volunteered a year. Okay. Um, if you count that year, I'm up, up at uh, lucky number 13, but... Yeah, that was that was a big adventure, man, for sure. You know, got to walk around on my own two feet, and got to had the help of my equine buddies to get around. And yeah, what, what, were, what were their names like? Fluffy, Snuffy, Fl- Fluffy, <laughs> Fluffy, and uh, yeah, yeah, Poncho and Snuffy, not not Poncho and Lefty, but Poncho and Snuffy. Yeah, you bet. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, man, they were great. They're they're good, good buddies. So, uh, did they drink whiskey with you? They only drank <laughs> beer. Um, okay. They, yeah, they had a bit of a drinking problem, and if you gave them anything stronger than than beer, they they got a little out of hand. What what kind of beer did they like? Was it like IPAs or? Oh yeah, IPA. <laughs> they love that. Knew it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. West Coast IPA. Yep, Yakima Valley hops. They really, they were kind of like hipsters, you know. They they really had a certain kind of beer that, and they they would only drink that. <laughs> I, I think I've seen <laughs> pictures of them wearing flannels. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. A lot of beard oil every morning. Um, yeah, they had that lumberjack look down. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're, they're good for a lot. 
a lot of esoteric weird things like I can't even talk about all of them you know man so you I, I read a story recently in an article about you where you had almost lost one of your fingers on the saddle horn yeah Ow! yeah a common um, uh, like rodeo injury if you're like a calf roper um, yeah I got my got my hand caught between the rope and the saddle horn and it just popped the, the tip of, <clears throat> yeah yeah it, it popped the uh, tip of my middle finger on my right hand off and then it broke a few fingers with it so is your your middle fingers actually shorter now a, a little bit like I don't have the real cool uh, Jerry Garcia thing going on with okay. it but um, I've got a nub and it, it healed really well. Like I can show you a picture of what it looked like after yeah. I did it. And you want to, you want to believe how well it, re it recovered. Wow. So that's how you got so good at the guitar, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, man, <laughs> kind of funny, like right before it happened, I, I, I was actually like really working hard at the guitar and, and doing like chicken picking. I like a country technique for playing. And, okay. Uh, is that kind of like but, a claw hammer on a banjo, but a little different? Well, kind of, because like with a claw hammer, you know, you're using uh, a lot of your hand to, to play, not just picking it, you know. And okay. with, with, with chicken picking, you're kind of doing that like a hybrid picking technique where you've got your pick and then you've got your, usually your, your middle finger and your ring finger on your right hand too, kind of helping out. And uh, yeah, I, I wasn't doing a lot of chicken picking after that the, uh, the finger got ripped off. You were doing some saddle horning. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so what did you, did you see the piece of your finger on the ground somewhere? No, no. Just I, kind of, I, was, I, like you had to, like, it didn't heal right, so you had to have it like amputated or how did that work? <laughs> no, I mean, it, yeah, I think like everybody, I had it in my head that, you know, you, you lose a part of a, a digit or, or a, anything, you know, like you, you look for that part and. You know, they put leeches on you and reattach it or whatever, whatever they do, you know. But, um, yeah, I couldn't find it, man. And I was bleeding pretty bad. And I I was back in the back country, about four miles back in, into, into the park. And I kind of needed to get out, get it taken care of. So. Yeah, you, you, you thought you had spam that night next to the fire. But... <laughs> oh, right. Yeah, I was looking forward to a, a chill night by the fire. <laughs> So, yeah. shoot man did you did you have to like brand yourself out in the forest like <laughs> make a fire and like cook your fingertip yeah. shut <laughs> how did you know man you, you've had this has happened to you before I, can tell. I, I think one of the craziest things i've never had any major injury like that but i was living in the forest in oregon for months and i was actually up in a tree and there was people that would bring the tree, they would bring to us uh, food and all that kind of stuff, right? So they sent me up some water, and the water I had had uh, Giardia in it, oh, so I ended man. up getting sick, you know? Like, I'm up oh, in this yeah. tree, pooping in a bucket, just like oh, God. liquid chocolate, you know? Oh, no. Oh, and no. I was able to heal myself, because we had these little rocket stoves where we'd cook with just like little sticks. So I made my own charcoal in there, and then I just started eating charcoal for like two days, and then I was fine. Oh, wow. What the fuck? So it was kind of like cauterizing my gut. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, charcoal, yeah, that'll, that'll pull everything bad out, right? Like, yeah, that's, I, that's what I remember. I was, remember you could buy it like at a natural food store or like a back then, like the GNC stores or something, you know? You could buy little oh, yeah. capsules of it to... Get rid right. of things like that. Totally, like kind of like 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 a bentonite clay. I think the same idea, you know. You Similar, can, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Kind of bind, wow, binds to it, and moves it yeah. all out. Yeah. Oh yeah, that that's pretty, pretty incredible that you kicked Giardia that way. I know it can it can lay up pretty good. I never got it. Yeah. In, in Glacier, you can get it there, you know, and you, and a lot of people don't filter the water when you get up real high up on the mountain, you know. Um, I was usually pretty careful about it unless it came off like directly from like a glacier but yeah man yeah you don't you don't want to get you already yeah tell me about the land how much land were you guys wandering around on and and why what were you looking for 
Oh, well, we were working for the federal government, so we, we weren't really doing much work. You know, as, as a federal employee, you're not allowed, there's a very limited amount of work you're allowed to do. Oh, so you can't tell us, basically. It, it's totally top secret confidential classified. information, <laughs> highly classified. I think in New Mexico there might be a vault where they keep the file. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure, but no, it was, it was a, a million acre park and I had a, about a, maybe a fifth of it where I could roam around in wow. my little area. Pretty big chunk of land, you know, uh, like nothing you get out here. Uh, this side of the country, we don't have land that large no. put aside, you know. No, they don't make that anymore. I think they they, they, they shrank don't. it. <laughs> they shrank it. They did. Well, Andy, we had a we had a lot of parking lots and shopping malls to build, you know. We had to get them up. <laughs> so, what what was the the funniest thing that you saw out on the trail? Like, did you come across any like? crackhead camps or <laughs> meth heads like lost in the oh, forest man. or it didn't it did not attract that demographic it definitely <laughs> attra it attracted people that um there were funny people i mean there were there were, a lot of people would go backpacking there for the first time and they, okay and, uh, they would uh be coming from florida or chicago and you know they kind of had a I don't know what you want to call it, like a type A kind of mentality. And uh, the they go out there and they wanted to fill up every day and they wanted to do 12 miles every day, up and down 4,000 feet of vertical elevation. And, uh, you know, they couldn't, they couldn't really kind of settle back and, and, and drop everything that they carried with them, you Is know. What the um, actual farm? And maybe, may, hopefully they would get out there and that would happen. But I remember like, because at the beginning I worked, before I did full-time backcountry ranger, I, I helped people trip plan. Trip plan? <laughs> I, I was kind of like working, writing backcountry huh. permits, kind of that kind of yeah. thing. And we patrol too, but we deal with a lot of, we educate backpackers, get them ready, uh, do, do a lot of grizzly bear education and that kind of yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah it did would just kind of blow my mind when people would come out there and not be able to just kind of let go of that kind of rat race mentality, you know, even yeah. all the way out, even all the way out there. Like you're just like walking on the trail with your horses and all of a sudden like some guy comes around the corner with his phone out and he's like, do you got Wi-Fi? Yeah, yeah, he, he, he's day trading, you know, at the yeah. campfire. He's got his laptop and a satellite internet and he's day trading. And He's like, I gotta, <laughs> I gotta get this email out by noon. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You got a deadline to hit. <laughs> Did you uh, did you get to carry a gun? Um, I I did, but it it was not a typical thing. I mean, like you, you had might... like a Tommy gun or something. You didn't have like a, <laughs> a Gatlin gun, like a shotgun. Or... The horses pulled a a Gatlin gun <laughs> behind me everywhere we went. That's great, man. Yeah, because we ran into Canadians or anything out yeah. there. We had to have be some... prepared, you know have at least like 6,000 rounds ready to go, <laughs> belt yeah. fed. T totally, it weighed a lot, but you know, Snuffy carried it. It's worth it. <laughs> yeah, totally. The, the feds were paying for it, so. What yeah, the yeah, farm? You know. But no, I, car I carried a, sometimes I'd carry like a uh, 44 Magnum, and mainly like really, really out there you want to carry bear spray you know but the, the 44 mag if you had a pony that went down you, you were, wait wet. wait wait you want to carry hairspray like oh no <laughs> yeah you so you can do good. your bangs <laughs> totally yeah you want to get a all-day hold on that, it that's a different kind of gun getting your bangs that way <laughs> for sure no you carry like bear spray which was like bear like, kind of like spray bear Ooh, yeah bear. grizzly bear yeah. Grizzly. Is that like whiskey mixed with like <laughs> juniper berries or something? It's pretty it's much like, like regular, you know how people carry like mace around, you know, yeah. and, and their keychain. It's kind of like that, but like uh, way bigger and way more powerful and it'll shoot up to maybe 20 feet with the wind cooperating, which, you know, when does the wind ever cooperate when you're up there in the high country, but. Yeah, you never know when like, you know, a grizzly bear's wanting to 
you know, push you beyond your limits, beyond your consent. Exactly. Maybe, yeah, they... maybe gank your wallet or something. Oh man, yeah, they're 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 up to no good all the time. You know, they love it. They, they have a good time. Yeah, with you, that. they try to violate you anytime out there. <laughs> You know, they never violated me. They, they were, I would much rather run into a bear than a, a human back there, you know? I mean, they left, the bears, they left you alone. They were cool. They were, yeah, yeah. They, they blended in perfectly. It, it was their home, you know? And I'm pretty much a guest in their home. Aww. And I gotta be respectful to them, you know? We, Swell, we've, yeah. we've eradicated all their other habitat and territory. And now they're in one little tiny part of the country. Yeah, it's, they they got the bare necessities of what they need. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. The bare they used, minimum. They used to have all of this. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Yeah. I mean, they, yeah, them and the buffalo and and the wolves. I mean, they were everywhere. And and, uh, and the elk and the giant sloths yeah, and the mastodons. Yeah. 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 But humans, humans, for some reason, I, they don't like to share. You know. What the fuck? They want it. They're not into that. Yeah, so. maybe with dogs. Yeah, uh, yeah. If, yeah. If you're like an animal that is not wild at all, and you'll do whatever we want it to do, and we can make money off it, then hell yeah, we're all for it. Yeah, let them let them in the door. Give them give them some scraps. Yep, we'll take a golden retriever any day, but a wolf, or, no. Or Can't or if it. it'll carry my shit and my Gatling gun through the woods for me. Well, that too. <laughs> yep, tree a coon. So, so did, when you were out there, did you sleep in a tent that you brought with you? Yeah. How that, like, how was that when it rained out there? Yeah, yeah, a tent. A tent or uh, if you're lucky, you might have a little uh, uh, backcountry, like, patrol cabin where you're going. But nice. there, weren't, there weren't too many of them, you know. But um, they were great if you had them. But otherwise, yeah, you threw a tent. Yeah. You were on the ground. Did you bring your guitar with you while you were out there? I never a did. Any instruments? No. Harmonica in the pocket? You know, I had a, I had a, I think a baritone ukulele for a while. Nice. Uh, I took it on a trip or two. Yeah. Yeah. Swell, yeah. Yeah. That's great. Because it, it was little, you know, like a big guitar. It's when, a pretty big thing to pack. When did you start playing the guitar? I know my early memories, like years ago, you were a drummer, and yep. I mean, I even remember seeing you play. Like, didn't you play with the jazz band at OU? Yeah, good I, memory. I remember seeing you perform with the jazz band on the drum set. Yeah, yeah, I totally. I mean, I did that to get better as a drummer. You know, I need to be fly. And, and then I, you know, I played with Colin, <laughs> like more uh, improvisational rock kind Colin of Colin McKnight, y'all. Colin McKnight. Colin Mother Farman McKnight. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Our boy. Hell yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a drink for Colin. <laughs> yeah, I think he's got a few words to say here. Oh man. Yeah, I'm sure. But yeah, man, I, I'm a I'm a recovering drummer and I I thought about it the other day and I did the math and I was 27 when I finally got a guitar. So I kind of came into it pretty late in life. Yeah. Yeah. But it's yeah. A, it's just another uh, percussion instrument in some regards, huh? Pretty much, man. Yeah. And I, I kind of, I, I, I uh, took to it that way. Yeah. You know, I, I that was my approach. I played it like a drum, you know, and you can do that. You can play rhythm guitar that way. Yeah, and then you, and you can do like really complex talking drum kind of effects on it. So that's, that's some yeah. of my earliest memories of you is we would run into each other and be like, hey, you want to go down to the Hawking River and play drums? Yep. Yeah, we were, man, we had a great time doing that. I think time disappeared when we did that. Yeah, there was no such thing as time. I mean, we, we were in another world, you know. And We were and the crafters of time. We were. <laughs> very good. Yeah, definitely, man. We owned time. Yeah. Know? 
and, and other people, uh, I mean, we would get a lot of people doing it. I remember at that time, we, we might have like up to, I don't know, eight or 10 people, I feel like, you know? Yeah, and if there was, if, like while the drums are going, there's always like bongs or didgeridoos going around. <laughs> So like, yeah. you could choose, you know, if you wanted to exhale or inhale. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Yeah. And why not do both? You right. Know? Yeah. It's a free country. Maybe like relax <laughs> on the bottom of it and, you know. They helped. I mean, yeah. I mean, man, it can really take you to another. It's like in Africa, you know, like the drumming is such a huge part of their culture and, uh, yeah, that brings the whole community together, and there's so much like ritual tied into it. Yeah, we had we had all we always had dancers. Yeah, for sure. Man, I would yeah, I would love. To, I don't I don't have that in my life anymore. Do you ever do that anymore? You know, I haven't in a while. I still have my djembe drum that I had from that time. Me too. I I got my second head on it. I put on there, and it's oh, been holding up it? good. Did you do it yourself? The second time, yeah. Yeah, I never got, I, I never did that. I did have one put on, two changed out. But. Yeah, I had the classic thing happen where it was left in a car, overheated and popped. Oh, fuck. Yeah, you can't do that. <laughs> no. Not to any instrument, really. Right, or any animal. Or any Even animal. Or dog or, yeah, because no. a, a drum, a drum head is kind of a, a living, breathing thing, you know? Yeah. I'll tell you what you can do it to is uh, if you harvest wild mushrooms and you want to dry them, you can put them on your dashboard and they'll increase in their volume and capacity of storing vitamin D as they sit in the sunlight. Oh, wow. Which no is totally way. different than any other herb. Damn. Like mushrooms. Yeah, more... Wow. Yeah, it's, it's like they, they're intelligent in a way. You know? Yeah. So like even though they're harvested, it's like still becoming something. Yeah, 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 totally. They're, they're like, yeah, a, a, a adapting to their environment and taking advantage of it. Have you ever uh, put, have you ever skinned any animals? I know it was like a thing when I was at Hawking College over in Athens area there where we would pop squirrel tails off if you found a, red, a dead squirrel on the road, you know, you could pop the tail off and then stick it on your antenna. <laughs> I admit, you guys at Hawking, you guys were a different uh, <laughs> culture. We, we, over at OU, you know, we were very civilized, and then there were the Hawking people. And you, yeah, we all wore camo, camo mixed with tie-dyes. You guys were like Daniel Boone. We were like the lords and ladies, you know, like drinking our tea. And you were out there with your coonskin hat cap on, like in your rifle. And... Yeah. yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, what a cool college. I, I love how, you know, that was part of the community, how you had OU and then you had Hawking too. And they both complemented each other, I feel like. Yeah, definitely. And I have I have skinned a bunch of deer, uh, okay, because I'm a hunter. But that was pretty much it. I mean, what, what do you like to hunt with? I I rifle hunt. Uh, Man, 30 for out, some reason, six. For some reason, I thought you were gonna say just a little whiskey in my hands. <laughs> yeah, I, <laughs> a buck knife, yeah, jump, a bottle of bourbon, and a buck knife. <laughs> jump out of a tree and. Grab onto those antlers and hang tight. Oh, yeah. Yeah, if, if you've watched Rambo, then pretty much you know how I hunt. I jump yeah. out of the tree the tree with a knife in my mouth, and, yeah, I take that thing down. Yeah, actually, the last time I looked up how to hand hunt deer on YouTube, there was a how-to video, and it just was a clip straight out of Rambo. <laughs> I was amazed. You can learn pretty much everything you need to know. To, From Rambo. To get by. From, From Rambo, Rambo, yeah. 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 That guy, incredible. So yeah, I remember, uh, I'm, I'm throwing in these memories here. So no, I love it. Man. One of my f favorite memories, you know, in regards to you and your drums too. I remember we were at a time with Colin McKnight. <laughs> yeah! And Mike Walker. 
And Mike Walker. There was a couple other guys that were getting together at your house that you were living with. Colin McKnight. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> it was like maybe like the third or fourth floor of this house. And you had your drum set up there, and we had all the instruments up there. I think I parked my conga set and whatnot in there for yeah. like a while. Um, but the jam room, the bedroom jam yeah. room. One of the things that you really impressed me with, I remember being amazed. Like I sat down to your drum set one day, and I was playing on it, and you just gave me this cold grizzly bear stare. <laughs> and, and I got off of it, oh, God. And, and you were like. You wouldn't touch Fishman's drum set, would you? What? What? Yeah. And I was like, oh my God. all right, man, respect. I won't touch your drum set. And it was oh, man. like, you were so into your drum set right then. I totally got it. You were playing in the jazz band and all these things. It was like, okay, I'm not going to mess with dude's drums. You know, it was like. Man, I can't believe. Oh, I feel, <laughs> I feel terrible about that. Hey, but the funniest memory of that room is we're all in there jamming fish song we were doing like a fish jam we were covering yeah uh just jamming on top of the maki super policeman jam uh, the, the reggae jam yeah, yeah, yeah. like hey maki super policeman <laughs> yeah 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 and then a policeman came walking through the door oh god i remember that <laughs> i fucking remember that man oh, it's like, this is like on the third or fourth floor of the house like the dude totally walked through a oh, whole house that had like all kinds of things that college kids oh, have out on the tables. Kinds of things. You yeah. guys, I remember you I remember were collecting a- beer cans or bottles. It was because you, like, Colin had this idea that he could drive them all to Michigan and get ten <laughs> yeah. cents a bottle. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. We had a whole fucking like I don't know what you call that room, but a giant room underneath the house, like full of beer bottles that we were going to drive to Michigan and make a ton of money. We were going to get rich. Get rich. (laughs) Well, when that cop came in the door, I think we had, I mean, I'm pretty sure we were all blazed. And, like, I I remember there being, like, a bag and paraphernalia laying out. And, and like, literally, he came in and was like, hey, you got to keep it down. I'm a cop, blah, blah, blah. And then he turned around. Yeah, we got a call. And then he turned around and left. And I remember we we looked around. We were like, uh, that, that, he didn't even, that, and we were like. I mean, he he was actually pretty cool. You know, he could have been could have been a dick. Yeah, I guess college town cop. He's probably seen that like every other day of his life. Man, down there in that town, that could be what his room sure. looks like. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, you know. And then later, you know, we did have a huge party at that house, and and, and it did get busted, and and we did uh, we did all get charged with. Uh, possession of marijuana and had to go to had the you know legality involved and that's all you guys that's all you guys got charged with i got charged with treason (laughs) (laughs) well why do you think i've been planting trees ever since (laughs) man i think i think like remember the chris the hippie he like he didn't get charged i think he paid for the lawyer and then the deal was like we all had to get charged he you know he paid for the lawyer and we had to all like bite the bullet for it yeah. and, uh, but it could have been i think it was like a hundred dollar fine you know like we found the lawyer from a high times magazine <laughs> <laughs> you know he had like a gray beard down to his belly button and he rolled up like hey i'm gonna <laughs> i'm the marijuana lawyer i'm in high times magazine i'm gonna i'm gonna get you off i'll you know like he he had done it before we had total faith in that guy and he he fucking nailed it yeah i remember running into that guy like the normal i think it was called normal it was like some organization back then that was trying yeah, to for legalization legalization right? yeah with that well i might edit a couple of these things out but <laughs> just for you know homeland security <laughs> issues. <laughs> don't edit all of them out though that- it was it was case file number four eight nine six two four if you want to look it up <laughs> oh man fuck them you know 
fuck them. <laughs> Times <laughs> you need to Sometimes, be aware of Yeah, you, you put on different hats. Yeah, for sure. You know? For sure. Yeah. So it's like you walk A into... Lot of- you walk into your, uh, you know, a place where there's like 25 people that want to give you money. You put on your real nice hat and you're like, hey, yep. I'm the shit. Oh, yeah. Look the part. Everybody does it. I mean, it's not like just you and I or something, you know. It's not like some totally. big secret. It's like some right? people just, that's all they do. I know. Yeah, for sure. I mean, the, the world is a stage, you know, like. Like Shakespeare put it, we're all we're all kind of playing our part, you know. Yeah, Shakespeare, man. You know, I love how they don't even know everything about him or like who he actually was. Or well, of course, there's people wondering if he actually was a he. But yeah, could have been a woman. Could have been. Could have been a dog. Could have been a cat. <laughs> could have been a group of people. I don't know. It could have been. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, and why we don't need to know, you know, kind of cool not knowing. Could have been like a 12 year old that had an adult acting for him. It could have been. It could have been like a child prodigy. Right. Could be a time traveler. Whoa! Could have been an alien. What the fuck? Right. Could have been could, the Dalai Lama. Holy. Could have been the good lord. Could have been the good fucking lord. Yep. The good farming lord. The good farming lord. <laughs> the good farming lord. <laughs> Yeah. Coming with a belt. <laughs> yep. Yep. S- yep. Snapping Hamlet behind his back. <laughs> Cracking the whip on old Hamlet. Making Romeo fuck? and Julio suck it. Oh, they love they they would do that already though. They loved they loved sucking it. <laughs> but hey, there ain't no happy ending for nobody. No, there ain't, man, you know. That's kind of a Disney tale, right? Yep. That's like the tale before the end actually happens. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You gotta, you gotta enjoy that happy middle when it's there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you do, man. And you don't know, you don't know, you know, your days are numbered and you don't know when they're gonna end. And you do, you do gotta like, you can't put everything in the future because we don't know. You can't take it for granted that you're gonna have a future or, You kind of got to balance out everything, you know? You got to enjoy the moment you're in. Yeah, true. This is a good moment. I'm, like, deeply going into thought now. Yeah, man, I feel like like our buddy Colin really, uh, you know, he kind of exemplified that appreciation of the moment. And, uh, like, whenever you hung out with him, he he was so rooted in in the present moment at his best, you know? Tell me about like those last years with Colin McKnight. Colin McKnight. Colin McKnight. Wait, waking the farmer. Mother farmer. Mother farmer. <laughs> they they were uh, man. They were. It's weird, you know. You know, at the time, I never thought they were. I thought we would be hanging out. Fuck, man. So we were like old, gray, bearded men you know and I, See, that, that's what i wanted to hear about this like last few years there and like how that felt for you and i mean like the way you describe it to me sometimes is like how i feel like all my relationships have ever been you know like they don't end quite the same as that but yeah similar feeling where i'm like oh man i thought we were gonna like be old with beards and shit yeah, you think you have way more time than you end up having, you know. And they they were uh, swell, yeah. What I mean, one thing that comes to mind, it, maybe it's kind of a topical thing, but like he, watching his evolution as a guitar player and watching him evolve, uh, it blows my mind. And and I wish I wish we had more recordings of him playing at the end. He really uh, same. Yeah, man, he he killed it with. With that band, we had a band, you know, Whiskey Rebellion, and he fucking killed it with that band. But then that band broke up, and then he kept developing, and then him and I kept playing together, and he kept getting better and better. And at the very end, um, it was such a joy. It it was like the greatest uh, musical experience of my life to play with him. When he and I were playing together, and I'd finally, 
I finally like kind of made that switch to guitar, you know, like, yeah. I'm like, you know, I'm like, I'm not identifying as a drummer anymore. I'm a guitar, you know, I'm a guitar player. I'm, I'm so you would start like doing rhythm on the guitar and he could do his like, totally his freestyle flow in on there. And yeah, man, I play some it like scales. Oh yeah, you know that guy. I mean, you you played in a band with that guy in high school. Yeah, I'd be I'd be playing with like a pot on my head with like drumsticks. And, <laughs> that and we'd that have was these... what I remember. You were, I remember you wearing a thing on your head like that. When I think about it, that yeah. is the image I have. Yeah, and it, we'd always steal like different instruments from out of our high school band room. Like we had a full size gong one time. Yeah, you could get whatever you wanted, right? Whatever we wanted. We'd have these like xylophone things, and but uh, I don't. We'd have this one song where I'd run over and just start tweaking with Colin's amp. <laughs> and he would just love it. Just like I love oh, that yeah, guy. Yeah. How he would just go with whatever flow he knew in that part of the song that the elf was gonna come over and start <laughs> messing with his amp. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what a dude, you know, like to fucking. To like be cool with not having control and to let go and to like he he didn't give a shit like that guy did not have any ego you know he he was so talented and he had such a little ego for the amount of talent that he had yeah he he really knew how to observe and play with other people yeah. beyond beyond music I, totally I mean yeah for sure if if we could all be a little bit better at that. There could be so much more fun happening and like way more high vibrant like oh, yeah. frequencies between everybody. It's just this like experience of actually seeing and hearing and communicating to other people all at the same time. Yeah, real true, real true communication. Like be, really being in tune. You know, uh, I, there's that. I'm, I'm not. In, I'm not. Uh, conventional religion or anything, but there's that Bible verse, like when, when two or more gather in my name, and I always took a weird liberal interpretation of that, meaning like when two people come together and they vibe together, and like, yeah. When, I like when, that. Yeah, yeah, so I mean, he, yeah, like he did that, you know, like he would vibe and, and you could, th that feeling of connection and that, that you have like a spontaneous community, you know, right yeah. in, the, in, in that moment of now. He, I think that was his gift to, to, to harness that energy and, and to manifest that feeling. So I, I remember you and Colin meeting up with me in Taos, New Mexico and picking me up from some earth ships. And it wasn't just a quick pickup. It was like you guys popped in and we hung out for like a week and a half or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't even know what we were. Were we like, were we like, we were road tripping, right? Back from. Yeah, we were uh, all road tripping, and you guys yeah. were headed to Felton, and I was going to California for a week. I ended up staying for three years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, we, we were heading back from Ohio, and yeah, we rendezvoused. Dude, that, that, that was such a, a cool trip, and I feel like we, uh, we took that hike to the Rio Grande. I think New Year's Eve, I think we, we did that. Oh, live. right. I remember all the ammunition going off. All the AR-15, AK-47s being all, all, the, all those guys. Yeah. 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 Not the people we were with, but like, yeah. Every, you can it hear like, it far, far. Like, well, it's a yeah, big it valley. Like, it was like, does everybody around here own an AK? You know, it was so weird. Yeah. But yeah, man, what a weird, surreal moment to be like Bam! our feet dangling over the edge of that canyon looking down at the Rio Grande thousands of feet below and hearing all that gunfire yeah. middle of the night and then walking back to an earth ship through <laughs> yeah. fields yeah. of sage and other earth ships man yeah. that earth ship community yeah that's such a cool cool thing about that area I've been back there since then, and it's developed. There's more earth ships and more developed architecture around them, and they're working with a lot more of the native plants and planting them around them a little bit more than I remember back then. And oh, cool. yeah. But those things are fascinating, just like, because you can see different ones being built in different stages. It's just like yep, yep. this big 
pit of dirt and then next thing you know there's tires lining the walls yeah tires tire full of full of uh what coke or bottle glass bottles and like uh or what don't you like pack them or yeah you pack, you pack them, them with dirt? like dirt and gravel dirt and, and gravel okay and whatnot and then you pound that in there and then you uh can build walls that are outside of that like outside of the ground or whatever you know so the tires yeah. are just holding up the ground so they're the like, foundation kind of yeah they're what's making it be like a cave and then okay. you build your walls with bottles and clay mud yeah. kind of mix right and you get all these cool textures with different color bottles and the shapes it's like mosaics and yeah all the it's glass like panels for heating the house up with that passive solar heat Man, yeah, what a brilliant engineering idea. I, I could totally see you living in one of them. I, I've often looked at my house and thought about just building a tire foundation around the north side of it and then just bringing a bunch of dirt in and turning it into one. Yeah, right. <laughs> but yeah, I can see, I definitely have dreamed and think about earth ships and I think that could be a good like next home for me. Yeah, man, I, I think you would be right at home in one. You're already the elf, <laughs> of, you know, you're from the earth, you're of the earth, and why not live in an earth ship? Yeah, just keep flying around the earth in circles as long as I can. Exactly, yep, they're, they're totally. They're pretty low cost, so they allow you a lot of freedom in that regard. You, they don't cost much energy. So it's just this yep. thing's like self-perpetuating itself. So I, can, I love that idea. It's like save I, thousands of dollars a month compared to and not be dependent on anything. I mean, the more the more independent you can be and not be relying on anything outside of your control. I mean, we're all dependent on the power grid, you know. And if that goes down, then then we're not. Wake the farm up. <laughs> yeah. No, nobody ever says that. It's like if the power goes off, what do we do? Then we'll exist without it on. Yeah. I mean, we have for what, like two hundred million years? Oh, for sure. And yeah. It's such a new invention, really. It's like if that many people can't live with it, then I bet we'll have a good population check and then the people that are able to live without power again will keep going. No big deal. I know. It's so funny how like every technology, how quickly we adapt to it and then become dependent upon it. Right. Not, long a not, not long after the introduction of that technology, you know. And then that dependency like creates new hierarchies. Yep. People yeah, who, sure. who control that dependency and can manipulate Maybe. it. They're probably going to cancel me for even talking about this. <laughs> We're both probably going to be uh, killed. <laughs> we'll, we'll get nerve, po nerve poison, I'm sure, in the next 48 hours, you know. Yeah, like somebody will come with a nerf dart. <laughs> <laughs> nerf poison us. Totally. Yep. Yeah. The old, yep. I have read about these... Uh, poison dart guns that they developed in the 70s that have some kind of jellyfish poison in it and what it does when it hits you all it does is leave a slight little red mark like a little freckle and goes into your bloodstream causes a heart attack you die and nobody can tell anything other than it looks like you had a heart attack oh man isn't that fascinating? I'm just, I, I thought everybody oh, should yeah. know that. Yeah, for sure. No mark. A, a little freckle, huh? A little red freckle. Yeah. So I'm glad they didn't do that back in the day when the policeman came up into our band practice. <laughs> <laughs> Not that time. We got off that time. <laughs> man. Oh, man. Yeah, you, you didn't get equipped with any weapons like that out in Montana, did you? <laughs> Uh, no. no, I mean, I did. No belts for your <laughs> Gatling gun. That could... No, I did. I did start buying guns out there, and they weren't to, like, uh, shoot anybody. They weren't for people or anything, you know? They were for, like, living off the land and for hunting stuff. Yeah. And, um, and there's a culture of that out there, and I think, 
I think guns get a bad rep. A lot of people forget. A lot of people live in areas of the country where there's no hunting culture and, uh, you know, they get all their food from the grocery store, from Kroger and, and uh, you know, Whole Foods or, or whatever, and uh, they forget that there's people out there that are actually a little more uh, connected, you know, kind of like our ancestors were, and they like to go out there and, and hunt their own food. And that kind of thing. Yeah, they, they don't even realize is they're chewing on a steak that they just got that somebody <laughs> yeah. probably shot that cow in the head in some kind of confined animal feedlot somewhere yeah. <laughs> and hung it up and then went on to the next one five minutes later. Or they just cleared an entire forest ecosystem so they could grow some beans so they can make some fake veggie burgers. What the farm? Oh, man, right? Like, yeah. Total, total like, disconnect from where the food is coming from and where the food is coming from, like, you, you don't even want to know. You don't even want to think about it, you know. Um, but hunting, yeah, going out, going out and killing an animal who lived out in the wild that had an incredible life and making a quick kill. And what a, you're, you're, you know, comparing it from that scenario to the one you just painted, like, what a better, you know. Well, yeah. Talk, a huge level of, of quality between one and the other, you know. Yeah, I think that's often why if I'm in a city and I go to a restaurant, I usually order vegetarian food. Right? It's just man, kind of a strange thing. And people are like, are you a vegetarian? I'm just like, uh, I don't put myself into a title anymore on like what my food thing is. It's like I eat whatever I want. I could order some meat at the restaurant if I wanted to, you know, but yeah. I just usually don't. I just eat what I want. Or what my body's telling me it needs. And yep, yep. Uh, well, you're you're in tune with it. You know, you're paying attention to your body. Yeah, it's not paying attention to some like fad or dietary book that somebody else wrote that they tuned into. Yeah. And I have looked at those, and I will still, and I listen and hear and encourage other people on their paths and what they want to eat or whatever. But I like looking at the whole story and get the whole food thing, you know? Oh, yeah. I I told I am with you. I, I've become more that way than than ever where I don't want to put a title, I don't want to put a limitation on it. Yeah, generally I'm I'm uh, I'm eating a lot of vegetarian. I eat a lot of fish. Um, I like good meat, you know. I like to know where it came from, what kind of life it lived. Um, if you give me an elk steak, I'm going to be all over it, you know. Um, good deer. Um, or good, like, grass-fed, organic, you know, like, meat raised right. But, man, you, you talk about, you get into that factory farm world, and what what a, what a whole garbage industry yeah, it's, what it's, we're talking about. I, I've been trying to look up the numbers, because I remember years ago reading about, I think it was, like, 15 years ago, I remember reading that New York City alone eats a million chickens a day. <laughs> so recently I've been trying to look up like how many cows they eat a day or how many this or that they eat a day. And how many rats? I wonder how many rats they eat a day. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> probably, probably not enough. I think they're going pretty rampant there. Yeah, yeah they need to up. They need to up, get those numbers up. Come on. Yeah, like the New York McDonald's should have some uh, rat those are McNuggets. <laughs> Those are rookie numbers. Get them up. <laughs> Get your rat McNugget. Come on. Dip it in our special sauce. <laughs> yep, you're going to love it. Mm. Yummy. It's honey glazed rat. Meh. <laughs> 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 Oh, a yeah. And you'd see the guy pouring out along the trough some food, and they all come marching up to get it, and they're trying to weasel their way in past each other to get a little snarf in there. Um, oh, man. I looked at it, and I was like, wow, that field's probably enough to, like, feed, like, three, four cities one day. Yeah, yeah. That's how many fields like that they have to have constantly. Is what the actual farm? Yeah, yeah, it can be it can be pretty dark when you when you go down that rabbit hole. And then they got the uh, deer in our suburban neighborhoods, especially now that are like overpopulating to the point where they have 
conservation officers going in there capturing them and then it making them infertile <laughs> castrating so the bucks or oh, like man. tying the tubes on the does and it's just fascinating to think of that reality i mean imagine if there was something like that coming after us because humans are becoming so populated like it's just like there's this alien that might just kick open your door and just come in and rip your balls off. Maybe we, <laughs> maybe we need that. <laughs> no, I, no, yeah, man. But well, I know you can't commercialize the deer meat. Okay. So yeah, it's, it's interesting. I have had uh, deer in the mountains of North Carolina, and I've had deer here in Indiana, and I think the ones in the mountains tasted better, even though the deer are smaller there. They get really big here because of the limestone in the water. It gives them bigger bone structure and bigger antlers. Uh, and and the uh, the corn too, right? Doesn't that help? Well, that that's what a... makes them taste not as good to me, is they're eating a lot of corn and soybeans. Yeah. Where right. in the mountains, there's not as many corn and soy fields, so they're browsing on wild plants all the time Na natural vegetation acorns yeah. right acorn right. finished deer right yeah 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 acorn finished deer that's priceless i mean you can't even buy that no you can't no no i, I know sure somebody in the back corner down there in the dark alley here on the dark web is gonna be like i'll sell you some yeah oh yeah <laughs> you got somebody's uh, their light bulb is going off right now I got, you got some bitcoins. <laughs> I got some crypto, man. Come on, I'll get you acorn finished deer. You bet. You got a little safe moon. You got a little Ethereum. What do you What do you need? <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> acorn finished deer. Yum. Yum, 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 yum. Yeah, so another topic just to slip into some cowboy yeah. boots and a little country <laughs> dress, and I'm a little chilly, so I might throw a little shawl on top. Ooh, look at you. Yeah, look I freshened you. it up. So <laughs> you just came out with this album recently, and you have this single cowboy boots and a little country dress. And I've heard the acoustic version that you did as well, too. And I probably don't spend that much time in rowdy bar rooms anymore that when I heard the acoustic <laughs> version, I was really turned on. And I went and grabbed a little huh? country dress and threw it on. <laughs> oh, uh, the imagery right now. I'm, I'm loving it. I can't. I can't unmentally visualize what just happened in my mind, but go on, go on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, here we go. Here's a little cut. Incredible. Go check out Michael Shaw's music, please. There's so much there. You gotta tell me, like, how was the process of creating this album he wrote on? Yeah, man, wow. Uh, it was a long time coming. I mean, we, uh, I, right around the time I started playing guitar, I think I, I started writing at the same time, you know, and uh, it didn't take a lot to write a country tune. You need to three chords and the truth to write a good country tune. <laughs> Farm yeah. Farm yeah, man. And yeah, I just wrote and wrote and wrote and, you know, kept thinking, yeah, one day I put out an album and um, I figured Colin and I were gonna, gonna do that together. And we were looking to do that uh, right before he died. We were getting a, we were actually recording a demo together um, that we were gonna, used to like uh 
further our cause of, of making an album. And there's a guy in Nashville we, we, we wanted to work with. So we had a lot of things like, you know, the idea was there and, and we were moving forward with it. But um, yeah. after, after he died, I kind of... I realized I'd have to like do it on my own and um, man it really ended up in like a, it's it's a pretty incredible story but the, the final road trip I took with Colin uh, we, we went down to Nevada from Montana uh, to the National Cowboy Poetry Gathering in Elko, Nevada cool and yeah yeah who even knew that that is out there I had no idea you know I, I mean, love poetry me too, man. And the fact that there's all these like hardcore cowboy poets and they're like they're like these eloquent cowboys and they have like really open minds. And they're they're like really artistic. They're uh, they're the kind of cowboys that you want to be around cuz they're they're fucking cool, you know. Do you, do you have any cowboy poets that you would recommend? Uh, John John Doran. He uh D O R D O R A N and uh, J-O-H-N. Cool, I'm gonna look that up. Yeah, yeah, so uh, me and Colin hung out with John. Uh, we played a gig when we were playing in that country band in Montana. We played a gig in Miles City at the Bucking Horse Sale, which they call it like Cowboy Mardi Gras. And we partied all weekend and played music on, a, on the back of a flatbed trailer in downtown. And Anyways, we like we we befriended. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, it was great, man. And in this really cool like little Montana town, it was a very Montana thing. A different, just a totally cult, a different culture, unique to that area that you can't really find out here. And um, anyway, we we be, we befriended John Doran, and he's like, "Hey, you guys, if you like to party, blah blah blah, you should go down to the uh, National Cowboy Poetry Gathering and check it out." And we're like, "Okay, copy that." And Farm we yeah. ended up Farm yeah, we're on it. John Doran. And uh John Doran. John Doran was a uh, a cowboy poet. Not only did he do that, he trained special forces for a uh, uh, horseback combat in Afghanistan. Like wow. army guys that would get on a horse and go way back in the mountains, like where a tank could not go. You know, and, I, and I have a fight. neighbor who is a horseback martial arts multi like international prize winner he's retired now he's like 70 or something but he was telling me these fascinating stories he'd go to these competitions where they'd like ride at each other with these different horseback like martial arts weapons and like try to knock each other off horses and stuff oh wow like jousting, but but more like they did ninja. archery. They did like swords. They did this other. I forget what it's called. Some kind of like jousting, like staff ninja kind of thing. Wow, man! I've never. I would. I would love to watch that. Yeah, I'd, I'd never even thought about it, but I mean, there's. I would watch so that many over cool golf. Things. <laughs> I'd watch that over golf any day. <laughs> That'd be pretty fun. Please prime time it. <laughs> yeah, totally. I'm sure it's you can find it on the dark web. I'm sure. Yeah, you gotta you gotta get them some acorn fed deer though. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's, that's the price you pay for it. So we we went down there to fucking uh, cowboy Nevada. poetry, Nevada. the cowboy poetry gathering, in Nevada, Nevada, in the middle of winter, and um, through Colin. Uh, we met this guy who ended up producing my album and, and Colin kind of ended up being the link between me and him. And I look at it as like, like he, he did that before he died. He like, I don't know, you know, he, um, what a incredible kind of serip serendipitous kind of connection. Gift. That, yeah. gift. It was a gift, yeah. man. Yeah. Yeah. And they were a Canadian band, and they needed some stuff that you couldn't cross the border with, and Colin happened to have it, and, you know, Colin being cool and generous with with everything, you know, he was like, here, take blah, 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 you know, take what I got, and uh, we all ended up hanging out, and we befriended the band, and... Um, was it... Yeah, they, I mean, that was, like, before the convoys were even stopped. Like, how did... How couldn't yeah. they get, get anything through from Canada, like... Well, it was a certain plant, 
candy that grew and uh, the government is not friendly to it, unfortunately. But okay, I got you. No, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah, no. contraband. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Send lawyers guns and money, you know, like, but uh, yeah, Colin, he was like, hey, Colin hooked it up and we all uh, partook and, and hung out and got to know each other and befriended these guys. And, Swell, uh, yeah. And then, and then uh, when Colin passed away, I, 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 uh, I didn't know how to get a hold of my buddy, Grant, who we'd met, the guy I'm talking about, and he played a show in Montana, and like I snuck backstage at the show and like kind of blew by the security guard and went up to Grant after the show and found him and, and talked to him and handed him a letter, and in the letter, I, you know, I only had like a minute to talk to him, and like in the letter, I kind of explained what had happened and had, how Colin had died and now I uh, kind of I, I wanted to record an album I knew it was like the only thing I could really do to move forward at that time with, with music and, uh, Grant yeah. he, he's a really cool guy you know he, so, he's like so you're like one of these guys that like works for a nonprofit and you went out and got a grant <laughs> totally <laughs> I went out I signed up I got a grant yeah. boom <laughs> And then he rode on. He rode on, man. Yeah, <laughs> he uh, he's like, yeah, you want to make an album? Come up to Winnipeg. And I fucking drove from Montana to Winnipeg one winter and got a bunch of great players together and recorded the album. And wow, so how long ago did you actually record the album? A long time ago, man. What um, the fuck? The album was completely recorded and finished before I left Montana to move to Nashville. Okay. And, uh, so my idea was that I'd move to Nashville, uh, make a connection or two, get a band put together, and then put the album out, you know, and be ready to yeah. support it, you know. Well, I, I moved to Nashville, I put the band together, and and then COVID hit. And, yeah, right, um, delay. Delay of game, man. Yeah, yeah, huge delay. But hey, I mean, you could still play, just put like handkerchiefs over your face or something, right? <laughs> totally. Look yeah, like some were bandits. <laughs> yep, do the yeah. bandit thing. I mean, it was, it, for a while there, it was like, you were, we weren't really sure what the world was going to be like, you know? We didn't really know for a while, and I'm glad I waited to put it out, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, we, we, we thought we were out of it, and then we got that other wave, and then we got that third wave, and like, oh, man. Well, it would, it would, I'm really would, excited that you got this out there, then. Like, I mean, that sounds like a, a long, hard road to get yeah, there. It was a long, it was a long ride wow. to get there. So wh when's your next album going to come out? Well, I want to record it uh, in the fall, I'm hoping. Cool. Um, and I, I want to do it with Grant again, and... I'm trying to find a studio right now, you know, and I'm hoping I can make a little bit of money back from the album to help pay for recording a new one. There's yeah. a lot of money to do, you know. I bet to do it right. To do it right, yeah, yeah. You can do it. You can do it in your living room with a laptop, which, which is totally cool and hell yeah. But um, yeah, we all can't be Billie Eilish. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> unfortunately. I wish we could, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, man. There, it's a lot of money, and then with digital streaming, you don't you don't get a lot of that money back. Um, yeah, go buy an album now, somehow, somewhere, some way. Enjoy it. The whole thing's been changed, you know. Now that we can go online and hear whatever we want to without paying any money, it, it's really convenient for the consumer, but for the artist who made that, that product, that music, um, it isn't a great return for them. Yeah, I can imagine. It's a lot different than the excitement that musicians had in 1970. It's like you press a record and then you have these big businesses that are distributing it all across the nation, and radio stations playing it, and then everybody's going and buying it. Yeah, all that money. You look at the amount of money they would put behind a record back then. Yeah. It's mind-blowing. Mind I, I think, like, 
as a graphic designer in the 1970s, designing a record, like, album cover artwork would have been one of the coolest jobs to get, right? Oh, yeah, because back then, like, like, look at, like, the, the Dark Side of the Moon album cover or any iconic album cover. Definitely, yeah. I'm, yeah, and, like, I don't know, it was a different world back then, and people valued the, the, the long form, the, you know, the long format of the record and the, the album art and the whole tangible part of it. It really connected you, you know, to the music. Right. So you know what, it, it's funny you say it connected you to the music, right? It's like the thing that graphic designers probably get the most excited about now, I would say just from observation is microbrewery labels <laughs> yeah there's a huge market I mean, for that. you can make like a crazy picture of a zombie and it'll say like like you know some city name like frankfurt kentucky ipa yeah right right yeah, <laughs> yeah like some kind of porter you know like <laughs> co coffee bean stout or... yeah, it's named after a ship that burned down in lake erie or something. <laughs> oh yeah man <laughs> The wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald, Gordon Lightfoot. Yeah, and it's now like, you know, it's it's like, what's it gonna be next? Like this, I guess it's like, people are really excited about making the art for the metaverse or something. Oh yeah, NFTs and the metaverse and, yeah, I don't even really understand all of it, you know? It's all digital though, and nothing will ever beat having like a tangible, Thing of art on your wall or in your hand. I don't care. Like looking at no, it through the through not. the media, looking at it through the medium of a laptop or an iPhone. It'll never, ever, ever, ever reach the level of actually having it here in the real world. As a not, not the meta world. As a fan of a musician or an artist too, I remember when you'd see a little address inside of a tape or CD cover and it would say, send a dollar and an envelope to this address and you're part of the fan club. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you would send that dollar and then like a month later you'd get like a little fold out piece of art that had all their albums for sale, it had t-shirts, it had oh, like man. maybe their tour coming up. Do you remember that? Do you remember that level of excitement when so that came exciting. in the mail? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was like your birthday, man. Like, yeah. unreal. There'd be like one quote from the artist, and you'd be like, that's so cool. They said that one thing. Yeah. And nowadays, we're like fucking over, over you know, we're, we are overwhelmed with information from the artist, like what yeah. they had for breakfast, what they had for dinner, what their living room looks like, what they're doing all day long. And like, I don't know. I'm not... I'm not sold on it, man. You know, like, wh what about not knowing everything about them? Like, whatever happened? Do you think Bob Dylan would be, like, posting all day long on Instagram, you know, if he right. lived? Well, I don't think well he, he probably could. He could probably post a new song every day. He probably could. But, but like, shoving, you think Jimmy Page would be, like, you know, showing himself in his pajamas at night you yeah, know like, he, he'd be sitting with his spongebobs on <laughs> yeah there's there's like, no mystery like we're we're pulling the curtain so far back nowadays that we're not leaving anything left like and why are we demanding that why are we wanting that i don't i don't i can't wrap my head around it yeah, I mean, I, I've been able to keep myself funded with my OnlyFans page, but... <laughs> well, that's, you know, I tell everyone, I tell everyone how good it is, and uh, I've, I've done a lot to promote it. Thank you, yeah, it helped me pay my mortgage. Oh, shit. Oh, I start every single day off looking at your OnlyFans page. <laughs> That's, that's the best time to catch me. It's just me and my coffee, nothing else. What the fuck? <laughs> nothing else. The bare, the bare minimum. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. This, this has been truly brilliant. <laughs> Farm off. <laughs> yeah, boy. Scoop that shit up. Oh, yeah, Mother Farmer.
Cool, man. All so right. thanks, Michael Shaw. It's been really real talking with you and got to explore all kinds of universes and horsebacks with <laughs> uh, earth ships and all kinds of good stuff. All around the world, man. From our yeah. world to the metal world and back. Yeah, I had some, some venison from multiple states along the way. Acorn finished deer, my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> this shit's too fucking good. We're talking about <laughs> traveling post-apocalypse times on horseback. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Man, what are we going to yeah, do? Else? Man. What the fuck? Man, Andy the Elf, it has been a true pleasure. Thank you for having me. Hey, everybody, give it up for Michael Shaw. Yeah, you can reach out and find his music, support what he's doing. Look forward to seeing you all. Keep listening to this podcast. Explore the other episodes. Have fun. Stay tuned. There'll be more coming from the Mother Farmin' Elf. Oh, yeah. Mother Farmer. Shut the farm up! <laughs>